Hello, my name is Marielle. Welcome back to another one of my movie reviews. This is part two of my favorite films that I've seen this year. In part one, I talked about films that have already been released, but I've never seen. In this video, I'll be talking about movies that have been released in 2021. So let's get started and talk about my favorite movies of this year. This is one of the most underrated movies of this year. I did not think that I was going to enjoy this movie as much as I did. The Dig aired on Netflix in 2021. Based on the true events of archaeologists unearthing a long lost ship in 1938, The Dig achieves a challenging tale in several different narratives. The honest portrayals by Carey Mulligan and Ray Fiennes were the highlight. Simon Stone directed The Dig with earnestness and integrity. The Dig highlights every moment of what the life of an archaeologist is like. Movies that explore careers gift audiences with new choices. The Dig demonstrates how we don't do certain things for the sake of it. Don't forget why you began it. I recommend that you watch The Dig on Netflix because this film needs to be watched more. The Father is one of the saddest movies that I've seen this year, but it was the filmmaking that had an impact on me. The Father is based entirely in the eyes of a man falling into dementia as his daughter struggles to take care of him. I was floored by Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman's performances. Hopkins especially drove home an emotional performance. In this well-directed feature, audiences are given an in-depth perspective of a man's disorienting world with dementia. Gigantic applause goes out to Florian Zeller for his impeccable direction. Pay close attention to every character, detail, and setting. I warn you, The Father is not for all audiences. It is sad. But it is a stupendous film that will stay with you long after watching it. I immediately wanted to watch this film as soon as I found out that Glenn Close and Mila Kunis were in it. Based on true events, a mother reluctantly helps her daughter get clean from her drug addiction. This is a role that I've never seen Kunis in. Close and Kunis work tremendously on their strenuous relationship. Rodrigo Garcia recognizes drug addictions. Four Good Days does not hold back on the brutalities of addiction. Although some parts of the story could have been stronger, along with more attention to supporting characters, Four Good Days is worth a watch for its remarkable talents. Gut-wrenching, you have to put Four Good Days on your watch list. Cruella was the first film that I saw back in theaters this year. I did not realize how much I missed being in a theater until stepping back into one. Based on the famous villain, the film centers around the story of Cruella. I had the best time watching this film. I was laughing for most of the duration. Emma Stone and Emma Thompson were superb together. One of the best parts of the film was the costumes. Craig Gillespie did an incredible job bringing this story to life. He gave the depth that Cruella needed. Cruella could have been a shorter film, but it captures an audience into the story. If you have not yet seen Cruella, I recommend that you watch it. Luca is a cute film. I wish this film could have been on the big screen instead of just being released to Disney+. Plus. Discovering that he can turn from a fish into a human, Luca and Alberto explore the world. Luca is given a powerful statement about friendship. While the boy's friendship has been up to interpretation among audiences, it gives young viewers positive figures to look up to. We are never alone. That was Enrico Casera's best element in his debut direction. While the film is not as original copying plot elements from The Little Mermaid or Finding Nemo, it's still a fun film to watch. The film is beautifully animated. Luca is a fun film for all families to enjoy. The Last Letter from Your Lover is a lovely film that I fell in love with as soon as I watched it. Interconnecting two love stories, Ellie is determined to track down the couple who wrote several old letters to one another. 
Shailene Woodley and Callum Turner surmount remarkable ranges in their performances. They created an electric romance. Felicity Jones was also terrific as a fierce and snarky woman. <laughs> Augustine Frisell captured the romantic atmosphere. She found excellent music selections, locations, and conquered the best cinematography. I was worried that this was going to turn into a sappy love story, but it didn't. The Last Letter from Your Lover is a feel-good film, and I recommend that you watch it. Last Night in Soho is a different kind of horror. Upon being accepted to Fashion Design College in London, Ellie somehow travels back in time to the 1960s where she cracks open a dark mystery. Last Night in Soho consolidates a dazzling atmosphere into this mysterious story. Thomas and Mackenzie and Anya Taylor-Joy gave versatile performances, each conveying riveting emotion. I was astounded by the scenes where they were mimicking movements in unison. Edgar Wright incorporates incredible visuals, crafty edits, and a signature soundtrack. A shout out goes to all the incredible editing for this film. He captured the otherworldly magic while also displaying hidden nightmares of the world. Go watch Last Night in Soho. It's a good one. Going into this film, I did not know anything about the late Princess Diana. Spencer is a biopic film about the life of Princess Diana. Kristen Stewart gives one of the best performances that I've ever seen from her. Stewart's study of the life of Princess Diana was studied in the highest regard. Spencer is an exquisite film. Everything from the cinematography, costumes, makeup, and the design of the film was terrific. Aside from that, I felt like the film focused too much on Princess Diana's declining mental health rather than discussing her accomplishments. Pablo Lorraine dictated a deep story about Princess Diana and conquered it in capturing her personality. You have to see Spencer, it's a good film. I had the biggest smile on my face when watching Doug Days. Doug Days is a spinoff to the 2009 film Up. Following the tales of Carl and Doug, they go on countless adventures around the neighborhood. I have been waiting so long for another spinoff to come out from Up. Doug is an absolute joy in each episode, chasing squirrels, watching puppies, or learning what his purpose is. In his final performance, Edward Asner did a wonderful job as Carl. Every interaction between Carl and Doug is touching. After 12 years, Pixar did not miss a beat with this spinoff series. At the same time as voicing Doug, Bob Peterson continued a story about friendship. Doug Days has heart, devoting its story to a dog's love. It's funny, adorable, and relatable if you have a dog. Check out Doug Days on Disney+. Plus. Since it's always tough just picking 10 films, here are three honorable mentions. I had a blast watching A Quiet Place 2 at the drive-in. Picking up where the events of the first film left off, a Quiet Place 2 features the remaining members of the Abbott family facing the terrors of the world. Emily Blunt, Melissa Simmons, and Noah Jupe delivered enticing performances, particularly Simmons. Story-wise, the film had some issues and didn't feel complete to me. The opening of A Quiet Place 2 is epic. The Night House is one of the most underrated movies of 2021. After the sudden death of her husband, Beth learns of a secret house across the lake. Rebecca Hall embraced her character's broken mindset. I was also happy to see Sarah Goldberg in the film. Conveying the fright mysterious atmosphere, the night house got lost in its story. Still, it's a movie that you should check out. I did not think that I was going to enjoy Free Guy as much as I did. Taking place in the world of a video game, Free Guy follows a background character who becomes more popular. Despite being unfamiliar with the video game world, I had a good time seeing it in theaters. The film did a nice job exploring a new world. No matter what, all audiences should invest in others' interests. Go watch Free Guy and enjoy it. And now, on to my top favorite film of 2021. Coda is the best movie theater experience I had in a long time. 
Ruby is the only hearing member of her deaf family. Caught in a tough decision, Ruby is torn between her family's fishing business and her love for music. Amelia Jones was magnificent in her performance, bearing strong emotions. Marley Matlin, Troy Kotsuer, and Daniel Durant were also tremendous, studying the relationship of the family closely. The best scenes happened in the family. Sean Hader emphasized a glorifying message in CODA. The deaf community is given a resonating representation. You can really learn a lot about sign language from this film. You need to experience CODA on Apple Plus TV. It is an exhilarating film. And with that, 2021 has come to a conclusion. Thank you all so much for your incredible support this year. When I uploaded my first review in January, I honestly did not think that I was going to keep creating movie reviews. Movies have always been my passion, and having the opportunity to talk about them with you guys has been a rewarding experience. I have learned so much this year, and I cannot wait to keep creating in 2022. If you are thinking of making your own YouTube channel, do it. It's a lot of fun, except take it slow and upload videos at your own pace. A lot goes in to making them. Again, thank you so much for an incredible year. Uh, have a great new year and be safe. And I will see you in 2022. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel or to my Patreon. My name is Marielle, and this has been another one of my movie reviews. Happy New Year.